Let me tell you a story. It is finally weekend again. So I wake up, I feel really happy, I'm full of energy, I slept like a baby, so I'm very positive. So I decide I should somehow put all of this to good use. Maybe I should do some home projects. It's weekend, maybe I can build something for my house, or do some improvements, or maybe fix something that has been broken for ages. So I finally decide that I should fix my bathroom, because it has a very big problem. The problem is, when I actually sit on the toilet uh, to take care of my business, which is uh, taking out my phone and checking some YouTube channels, then I realize that the Wi-Fi is disconnected. Uh, there's actually no signal from my wireless router. That is simply because my wireless router is just too far from my bathroom. But there should be a solution for that problem, right? So I actually go online to check out some YouTube videos. I find a video that shows me how I can use an old wireless router that I have, which I don't use anymore, and set it up as a repeater bridge. Very interesting. But I also find another video that shows me how I can use the same firmware, but this time set it up as a repeater, not a repeater bridge, which is a little bit different, but more or less does the same thing. So I was able to successfully set up a repeater bridge and extend the range of my Wi-Fi. Ever since then, I've actually tried the repeater and repeater bridge features many more times. Some of those times, I had to actually first overcome some issues and problems before I was able to set up a repeater or repeater bridge. Some of those problems were my own mistakes, but some of them were not. So in this video, I will try to go over some of the issues and mistakes that might happen during the DDWRT repeater and repeater bridge setup and talk about their possible solutions and workarounds. Hopefully the information in this video can help some people who are experiencing the same problems and issues. The firmware is obviously one of the key factors that makes it possible to use the repeater and repeater bridge features. For example, the stock firmware of this Linksys wireless router doesn't have those features, and that's why I actually had to install DDWRT firmware in the first place. But it turns out that the DDWRT version and build number that I install also matters, because some builds might have some bugs when it comes to certain features, so it is recommended to use a recent stable build which is compatible with my wireless router. For example, this is how I would personally try to find the best build for my wireless router. First off, I'm gonna check the wiki page for my wireless router. Here it tells me that my router has a Broadcom CPU and I can install K26 Big, Mega or K3X builds. Now I'm gonna check the repeater and repeater bridge wiki pages for any recommendations for routers with Broadcom CPUs. In the repeater page, it tells me I should not use V24 SP1 for Broadcom CPUs. In the repeater bridge page, it tells me that WPA2 AES is broken for K26 builds after this. I don't want to risk it, so I'm going to forget about the K26 and go with the latest K3X build. Now I'm gonna check the DDWRT forum to see if there is any known repeater or repeater bridge issues with this build. If not, I'm gonna use it. Some people might notice that when they log into their router and go to the wireless and basic settings tab, there is no repeater or repeater bridge options there. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we cannot use that router as a repeater or repeater bridge. Because as you can see that could be the behavior of a router with Atheros CPU. With those routers I can select the client option instead of the repeater, or the client bridge option instead of the repeater bridge and then add a virtual interface to broadcast a new SSID. First of all, I would 100% make sure that the security settings that I enter here are exactly the same as the ones on the primary router. I would also use the WPA2 PSK with AES for both SSIDs. I have noticed that sometimes the secondary router just wouldn't connect to the primary router, even when I use the same security settings. 
I was actually able to fix this by just power cycling the secondary router for a couple of times. I would power cycle it once and test again. If it is not connected, I would power cycle it again. Usually after two or three times, it would connect. But sometimes I've seen that the routers are connected to each other fine. Even the wired clients here are connected fine, but the wireless clients have problem connecting to the repeater. Sometimes this is because the secondary router is just not broadcasting the SSID. But sometimes it is broadcasting, but when I want to connect, it just doesn't connect. It is as if I'm entering the wrong password. So what I would usually do in these situations if the power cycling and rebooting the secondary router didn't help is to disable the security for the repeater's Wi-Fi and then test again. If everything worked fine, then I would add the WPA2 AES security. So one of the differences between the repeater and repeater bridge is actually in the network setup. In the repeater bridge mode, everything is on the same subnet, whereas in the repeater mode, the secondary router's local network is different from the primary router's network. So if I do something wrong when I configure the network in either of the modes, then it can cause problems. So I need to make sure that I've done it properly and not by just guessing and hoping using a random IP address would be enough. For example, in the repeater bridge mode, everybody is on the same subnet. There is no WAN configuration needed for the secondary router. Basically, it doesn't need a WAN IP address. The only thing that I will give it would be a local IP address, which has to be on the same subnet as the primary router. For example, if this is the primary router's network, I can assign 192.168.1.2 to the repeater. Subnet should be the same as the primary router. Gateway and DNS would be the IP address of the primary router. Whereas in the repeater mode, there is going to be a WAN IP address and a local IP address. The WAN IP address would be on the same network, same subnet as the primary router. By default, it is in the DHCP mode, which means it will be assigned automatically by the primary router's DHCP server. The local IP address, on the other hand, has to be on a different subnet. For example, this one, this one, or even this. Anything which is different from the primary router's subnet should work. Okay, so let's quickly recap what happened in this video. Setting up a repeater or repeater bridge is a very helpful way to extend the range of our Wi-Fi. We can install DDWRT on an old wireless router and use it for that purpose. However, we might face some problems and issues as we are trying to set up a DDWRT repeater or repeater bridge. So the problem number one we talked about in this video was related to the firmware. I should make sure that I have downloaded and installed the right firmware for my wireless router. The second thing we talked about was related to the wireless routers that might not have the repeater or repeater bridge options. Now I know that I can pretty much use the client and client bridge options and set up the same thing. Number three, we talked about times that the secondary router might just not connect to the primary router. Even though it is within the range, even though it's every setting is the same as the primary router. And we talked about how power cycling the secondary router for a couple of times can be helpful. And if the connection problem is between a wireless client and the repeater, then I know that it might help if I first remove the security for the repeater's SSID and try to connect. If everything worked fine, then I can add the WPA2 AES security. And last but not least, we talked about how important it is to choose the right IP address and subnet for the repeater and repeater bridge. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Please hit that like button if you liked it. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you next time.